Yes, there will be a benediction. There will be a benediction, but we're, we're, we're surprising our senior minister, actually, today. As you can see. <laughs> Before we receive the benediction, we have a surprise for Heidi, our head of staff. Heidi came to McAllister Plymouth. She's been here for 10 years now. But what some of you may not know is that it is also the 30th anniversary of her ordination. So, Heidi, the, the flowers are for you to take home. And also we had a, an ulterior motive in the stole that we convinced you to wear today. The six-year-olds, I believe they were six and maybe other ages, who made the stole 10 years ago are the 16-year-olds and, and teenagers who made the sign that you will see hanging in the social hall. So, actually, many behind you. <laughs> On behalf of the staff and volunteers, we wanted to recognize and congratulate you Heidi, on your 10 years of service to McAllister Plymouth and your 30 years of ordained ministry, we will celebrate these anniversaries with fruit, vegetables, and cake in the social hall after the service before the Lunch and Learn begins. Please come directly to the social hall after the service and help us celebrate Heidi's milestones, then to the Plymouth Room to hear about Store to Door. In recognition of your service and gifts, Heidi, we have asked a couple of people from the congregation to come forward to speak. Lee Schaefer, <laughs> Kelly Hulander, <laughs> Kelly and Lee, why don't you both come up and you can flip a coin as to who goes first. Yeah. I'll go first because I got here first. It's heads. All right. This is called Why I Love Heidi. I love Heidi because she's a great guy. I mean that literally because Heidi doesn't meet stereotypical expectations of a Midwestern Christian woman. Despite the progress we've made in traditional gender roles, some people still expect Christian women to be totally extra sweet and super pliable. <laughs> it gets better, it gets better. We aren't supposed to have opinions beyond whether or not you put marshmallows on your baked sweet potatoes, which is a can of worms I'm not going to open here. <laughs> Heidi acts more like a guy than a traditional Christian woman, which is a good thing. She's honest, outspoken, intelligent, and strong-minded. She gets angry, she talks about it, and then she gets over it. She's able to accept her mistakes and even laugh at them, which is a wonderful thing for our young girls to see in this culture that so often asks girls to be perfect. Being guy-like gets Heidi into trouble sometimes, but I love her for it. I love Heidi because with her, what you see is what you get. She is straightforward and she tells the truth. I love Heidi because she is assertive and says what she thinks right to your face. That makes me trust her. Heidi doesn't gossip and criticize people behind their backs. And frankly, I wish that more people around her would, uh, around here would extend her the same courtesy. I love Heidi because she listens to feedback and she works on it. When we first came to this church, before Kurt joined the bell choir, Kurt's my husband, he didn't feel too comfortable here. He isn't a church member because that's not where he is on his spiritual journey. He wasn't sure how well he would fit in. I mentioned that once to Heidi, and the very next Sunday, literally, I saw her sit down next to Kurt at social hour and ask him how he was doing. She kept checking in with him at church events and social hours for the next several months. She helped Kurt feel like one of the guys. Another time, I told Heidi that I felt like this church was more Presbyterian than UCC. I come from a UCC background, and sometimes I miss it here. During the next church service, Heidi quoted not one, but two different UCC leaders in her sermon. It felt really good to me to hear those UCC voices from the pulpit. I also love Heidi because she's a terrific role model for our children. My own role in the church is on congregational fellowship, and I worry sometimes that my daughter will grow up thinking that church women need to work in the kitchen. Heidi gives Stephanie another model. She shows all of us, in fact, that a woman can be in charge and do a great job. Our kids will not grow up with outdated stereotypes of Christian women because Heidi is giving them a model of female strength and leadership. I love Heidi because she knows how to lead. Three years ago, 
The budget process was very painful. We had to make deep cuts, and the session met until very late into the night. Lonnie Jordan did her usual beautiful job of leading the budget meeting. It wasn't her fault. It was just that the decisions we had to make were extremely difficult. Heidi determined never again to let the session have to go through such a painful process. For the past two years, Heidi has required the church officers and finance committee members to meet and create a balanced budget proposal before the session meets as a whole. Because of her leadership, the past two budget meetings have been simple, focused, and positive. The difference that she has made in this process is astounding. Finally, I love Heidi because she loves us. I feel like I could tell her anything, and she will still accept and love me. She may not show it by being sugary, sweet, and mushy, but Heidi truly does love her flock very, very much. So next time you have a criticism, suggestion, question, or pressing life problem, I urge you to take it directly to Heidi. She will listen and respond honestly and with love, because she's a great guy. <laughs> I, too, was honored with the request to speak. And our family and Heidi got here at exactly the same time. Uh, we sat right over there during Heidi's first sermon. And it was not long after that Heidi agreed to lead the memorial service for Tanya's mom. And we were not church members. We had just gotten here. And uh, we'll always be grateful for that. Uh, for those of us who serve in what is generously called the leadership of our church, uh, we see a lot of Heidi during the week. I've been on the GEM committee. I've been on the membership committee. I've been on session, two terms as vice moderator, and on personnel. And there were times during that period it was tough to see us as pastor parishioner. Some days it felt more like partners in a sp struggling small business. Um, for example, you know, I get antsy in meetings that go past an hour, and Heidi's a great talker. Um, <laughs> when I was running session meetings, and we get done 15 minutes early, Heidi would then talk into air for 15 minutes. <laughs> When I pointed out that it was okay to actually end a meeting early, she just responded with a broad smile. And what she communicated was, oh, Lee, don't be silly. There's always more to talk about. <laughs> Her great instinct is to charge ahead a new program, a new direction, and then maybe figure out the details later. And figuring out the details is not the strongest part of Heidi's game. <laughs> it must be said that she's the single best improviser and problem solver on her feet I've ever known. Um, and may God bless the 3 um company, producer of the sacred post-it note. <laughs> but what I keep coming back to in my reflection is my experience with Heidi as a great teacher. Uh, she's like the unforgettable professors that uh, we had across the street at McAllister when Tanya and I attended. She has enthusiasm. She has commanded the facts. She's read everything. She puts things in a narrative that's very accessible, and her skill with language is really quite remarkable. It's a big part of our culture here that Heidi set in place from her earliest days of her ministry here, and that is her statement that we do not have all the answers, but seek understanding by together asking the right questions. And I finally figured out what Heidi was doing that's very clever. It's a subtle word, and that is all. She does not have all the answers. She just has most of them. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not talking about Heidi the preacher in front of the church. I'm talking about the Heidi who shows up at committee meetings, who chats with you at, in the social hall, the person who comes and, and meets with you over coffee. One day Heidi visited me at my little consulting company. Within minutes, she was at the whiteboard with, a, with the dry erase marker talking through market segmentation for a community church. <laughs> Another time we discussed the outer darkness, as mentioned in the Gospels, and I learned a lot about light in the ancient world. Never thought about it. Artificial light was expensive and scarce. And darkness was really scary. Without light, there can be no real security. And then she would also fill me in on matters Presbyterian, like the day she decided I needed to know about the Book of Order. I had humbly suggested that we might tear one in half and throw half of it away. Um, and how much better it is to have all the rules written down and have it accessible to everybody. Now the minister and the priest and the big cigars like you, Lee, they don't have any special power. The lowliest backbencher can see how clearly the process works and they can influence the outcome. 
Similarly, she once decided I needed to know about predestination. She was fascinated by my background in the Assemblies of God. I mean, we didn't talk about predestination there. And uh, so she explained it. Predestination was a wonderful, liberating concept for the faithful when it came to understanding that from the teachings of John Calvin and others. Now the priests and the ministers and the big cigars of the church couldn't make people anxious about their salvation and therefore have power over them. Relax. God has chosen you. So much of her teaching has showed me that in the finest traditions of the Christian church, the concern is for everybody, including particularly the folks at the margin of the broader society. The power relationships that are really common out there in the world in here do not have relevance. And again, I'm not talking about the sermons on Sunday morning. I'm talking about the day-to-day work with Heidi. That's what you learn. And Lord knows we don't always get this right, but the principle here is that you don't have to be cleaned up or well-off or even well-behaved to find love and acceptance. You don't have to pledge a bunch of money to be put on this session or be a leader. And yeah, it is okay to ask questions of our senior minister and of each other. Heidi, in short, teaches me over and over again that the Jesus of Nazareth, who said the first shall be last, and the guy who took his meals with prostitutes and tax collectors, is alive and well. And so for ten years we've been together, Heidi's help asking the questions and seeking to better understand what it is that we can be and do. And so, Heidi, thank you for teaching us so well for these last ten years. We'll pray with Heidi and as a community together, and then in lieu of shaking hands after Dwight gives the benediction, we will go and celebrate together in light of time and store-to-door um, lunch and learn. So, Heidi, will you come forward, please? Let us bring our thanksgiving and blessing to God in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for calling Heidi to ministry for nourishing us with your grace. We give you thanks for her loving and supportive ministry, for her truth-telling, for her compassion, for her guidance, for her humanity, for her generous heart and strong leadership, for her dedication to the church. We give you thanks, O God. Shower Heidi with your love and blessings. We pray especially that you pour your grace upon her as she continues her ministry that she feel your hand in everything she does, and that she be strengthened by your love and compassion. May your ways, God, be her ways. May you guide her for the length of all her days. We pray that your grace will abound and shine through everything she does, that the fullness of your love may continue to be shared through her. May your spirit comfort her, O God, and make her strong. May you give Heidi a song in her heart, With grateful spirits, this is our prayer. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Would you all rise for the benediction, please? As we bless Heidi, and as you proceed on your journey of faith to Easter, called Lent, be assured of God's constant presence and steadfast love. Go in peace. Make peace. Amen. Amen.